welcome to everyone that's joined us. Thank you so much for your time, and, and we appreciate uh, you joining us as uh, we're all uh, going through this this amazing and difficult time in the world right now. Um, so we'll go ahead and get started discussing Windows Virtual Desktop. OK, so as we get started here, um, I'm just showing my lab environment real quick. What I've got built out here is just a quick um, Azure AD uh, instance, um, Total Cloud IT Lab. Uh, and then just a simple subscription. There's nothing in uh, either the Azure AD or the subscription yet. So uh, with that said, we've got a completely blank canvas. And if this is your first foray into Azure, if you've had Azure before, um, you can go ahead and uh, get this set up. So uh, that having been said, I'll go ahead and drag uh, the tutorial we'll be following. It's directly from Microsoft publicly accessible, just search uh, Windows Virtual Desktop Tutorial and docs.microsoft.com and you'll find this. So step one is to create a tenant in Windows Virtual Desktop. So what do we need to set up a tenant? Well, we've got our Azure Active Directory and a, a global admin account. The admin, uh, the account that I'm signed into right now is a global admin. So, and then an Azure subscription. So as we saw uh, earlier, I do have a blank Azure subscription, so we'll go ahead and uh, get started. So we'll, <clears throat> following the uh, directions here, we'll grant Azure Active Directory, or rather we'll grant Windows Virtual Desktop access to our Azure Active Directory. To do so, we'll go ahead and copy this link here. If you are a partner trying to do this on behalf of one of your clients, uh, Microsoft does provide those uh, links for you as well. You just simply need to replace this uh, bracketed tenant um, with the uh, GUID of the uh, your client's Azure Active Directory instance. So uh, that having been said, we'll copy this link, go back to our uh, uh, back to our session here. That is the lab. We'll paste and go. We'll sign in with that global admin account. And now we're granting permission to the Windows Virtual Desktop uh, provider or the server uh, access to our tenant so that they can grant people access to WVD. Uh, this is how we uh, set up our app groups and, and just our access control mechanism for Windows Virtual Desktop. So we'll hit accept here. I'm dragging the tutorial back on our screen. We can see it's successfully registered. Dragging the tutorial back, we'll accept the client app as well. So we'll copy this link, paste and go. Once again, we'll select our admin account and we'll grant the permissions required for the desktop client. We will accept. Fantastic. So now if we were to go to Azure Active Directory, Enterprise Applications, we see that Windows Virtual Desktop is now registered. If we refresh, we should see both. Perfect, and there we go. So. Now we need to be able to create a tenant uh, within Windows Virtual Desktop. Um, and able to do so, uh, to be able to do so, we need to grant ourselves the tenant creator permission, um, looking at the tutorial here. So we'll assign the tenant creator application role. Um, to do so, we'll go to users and groups under the server app. So we'll click on the server app, click on users and groups, and we'll add a user. We'll select myself, at least myself in the lab. And you can see here the only role that's available to assign is tenant creator. So we'll go ahead and assign. OK, so now I have the default access um, from accepting the app into our Azure AD and a tenant creator. As we scroll through here, um, before we can continue on, uh, we need two pieces of information, our Azure Active Directory tenant ID and our uh, Azure subscription ID. So we'll go ahead and quickly open a notepad. We'll zoom in a bit here so it's easier to see. Azure AD, uh, GUID, and subscription ID, GUID. All right, we'll go grab both of these. I'll show you how to get these. In order to get these, we'll go back to home. We'll select Azure Active Directory properties on the left blade. And 
we will select the directory ID here. We'll click this blue button. It copies our directory ID. And we'll paste it right here. Full screen this. And then we'll grab our subscription ID. So we'll go back, click subscriptions, and copy our subscription ID. Okay, so now we have our Azure ID, uh, Azure AD GUID and our subscription ID GUID. Going back to our tutorial, uh, the tutorial also walks you through um, the exact places where you need to grab the uh, subscription and uh, uh, Azure AD. So we'll go ahead and create a new PowerShell session and um, we'll zoom in a bit so it's easier to see. So if we do not already have the, uh, the Windows Virtual Desktop module installed, it is as simple as following this link and running the command install module name Microsoft Infra RD PowerShell. So if you do not have the this PowerShell module already installed, uh, you can simply invoke this command and accept any warnings um, for installing from the gallery. You can see I already have it installed, so it's not going to prompt me. That being said, the command we want to run is add a uh, RDS account uh, deployment URL rdbroker.wvd.microsoft.com. So this is the default uh, Windows Virtual Desktop um, deployment URL that we'll be using to, to manage. Um, it, it says deployment URL, but we use this as well for managing and, uh, and, and looking at connection errors and etc. So we'll go ahead and hit enter. This will pop up a login prompt. So I will go ahead and do my login. So at tcitlab.onmicrosoft.com. I will retrieve my password in just the moment here. sign in and there we go we've signed into the default tenant group um, using tcit lab so now that we are here let's see what microsoft has us do next now we're going to create a new tenant within rds so we'll go ahead and copy and paste that command right into our uh, our powershell session here and we will name this um, tcit for total cloud it windows virtual desktop uh, tenant zero for the first tenant. The Azure AD tenant ID we have saved very helpfully on our notepad. So we'll copy and paste this. And then the subscription ID, I will shift enter this so that it's easy to follow. We'll copy our subscription ID. Oops, I accidentally pasted, copy and paste. Mm, I messed up the command. I guess it did not like our shift enter here. So we'll go ahead and just control C and I'll backspace this so it sees it as one line. I enter. And there we go. We can see that it's created us uh, a new tenant called TCIT WD uh, tenant zero. Um, and then the, the tenant group name is uh, the default tenant group. So you can create multiple tenants for multiple uses, um, and this allows you to set the scaling type and et cetera per tenant um, uh, or per workload, perhaps. So uh, having created our tenant, we will go back to our tutorial, and we want to create, uh, we want to do a role assignment. This is different than the role assignment that we performed um, in the, the portal. So we'll copy this role assignment. And this effectively grants, we'll control C a few times to get a fresh prompt. Uh, this effectively grants the UPN that we assign um, the RDS owner role. So uh, this allows us to read connection error logs and, and, and take administrative actions against the, the Windows Virtual Desktop tenant. So the tenant name is TCIT WVD tenant zero, sign in name. Is john.no at tcitlab.microsoft.com. 
and the role definition name is RDS owner. Okay, and we can see I have been assigned the role. Perfect. All right, so that allows us to take next steps. And next steps is we, we want to create a service principle um, within Azure AD, which is the, a, a similar concept to uh, service accounts in the um, traditional way of working with Active Directory, where you create a service account for an application to log in. So we have an application, Windows Virtual Desktop, in our, Active in our Azure Active Directory, and now we want a, a service account for it to run under. If you do not already have uh, the module installed, you'll want to install the Azure AD module. I already do have it installed, so we will follow the example and import the module to our PowerShell session. Uh, and then we'll get the Azure AD context, uh, which is going to be used for setting up our service account. So we'll copy this. Once we hit enter, we'll be prompted to sign in. So John no, at total cloud IT or TCIT lab dot on Microsoft dot com. And then I will once again retrieve my password. All right, so now if we do AAD context, we can see um, connected to the Azure cloud under this tenant, uh, and we can see that that tenant is the same. So 1E73, uh, we're under the same tenant, perfect. Going back to the tutorial, we'll copy this command. And what we're doing here is we're creating a new Azure AD app registration or, or application. Um, and we're making it available to the Windows Virtual Desktop tenant, and then we're just setting a, a display name. So we'll go ahead and copy this whole line. And I like uh, what uh, Microsoft has already presented to us, so I'll simply hit enter. And now we need to generate a, a, a unique password um, for this application. So. Um, Here's the service principal creds is going to be simply a new Azure AD application password credential. Um, that's the entire command lit. And then the object ID is uh, the object ID of the service principal we created and assigned to this variable prior. So we'll copy paste, and we should simply be able to hit enter. And so now we need the application ID of the service principal we made and then the password to it. So uh, service principal dot uh, app ID. So this is the, the unique application ID that we need to store securely um, for our for our uh, Windows Virtual Desktop uh, service uh, principle. So I'm going to use my password manager on a separate screen here and add a new login. So I have this securely saved. So this is TCIT lab. And then, uh, uh, service principal. These service principles are created with a, a very um, constrained set of permissions. So usually when you set them up there for a specific purpose, um, and I can also show you in the portal as well where you'll find it. So we'll copy this, paste it into my manager, and then likewise service principal creds dot value. This allows us to extract the value of that password we created. So we'll copy this, save it, and now we've got this securely saved. So this is similar to an app password if you're familiar with uh, Microsoft's multi-factor authentication app passwords. Uh, creating this uh, the first time after you lose this uh, variable, um, you cannot retrieve this again. So I, I'll typically save this somewhere. So with that said, we will revisit the tutorial. So what I uh, skipped over a little bit is um, we can retrieve our tenant ID uh, from uh, PowerShell uh, with our AD, Azure AD context, or uh, because I already have it saved in a OneNote, I didn't, or in my Notepad, I did not really go over that. Um, but simply Microsoft is saying for the password, it's service principal creds dot value because the creds variable is where we assign the password uh, or the credential. And then the app ID is on the service principal itself that we created. So 
creating a new role assignment in Windows Virtual Desktop. So now we're going to do the same thing and assign this new service principal, uh, the, the RDS owner as well, so that it can take administrative action um, during the deployment of a host pool or a, a, a set of session hosts within Azure. So to do so, we will want to assign our uh, WVD tenant name to this variable. It's not necessary to use the variable, but uh, we'll do it to follow Microsoft's example. So it's going to be TCIT WVD tenant zero. And then the uh, new RDS role assignment is going to assign the RDS owner role to the application ID of the service principal under the tenant name uh, TCIT WVD tenant zero. So we'll copy this command, paste it, and hit enter. And just like that, we can see uh, the role assignment ID, the scope, tenant, tenant name, uh, the app ID, and the role definition. So that is complete. Now we're going to test it. So we will build the credential set for logging into Windows Virtual Desktop uh, with the service principle. So if we paste here, we create a new object, uh, PowerShell credential. Um, using the app ID as a username, and we convert that plain text value of the password into a secure string. As we enter, we can see that creds is now a valid set of credentials, and we'll add RDS account again with that same um, deployment URL, but now we'll specify credentials and specify that it is a service principal, and also as well uh, specify which Azure AD tenant we're logging into so that it knows which Azure AD tenant to retrieve uh, the service principal from. So copy this, paste it, and we can see here the username is blank because a uh, service principal does not have a username field, but it successfully signed in. So now if we get RDS tenant, the service principal should be able to enumerate, and yes, it did, the tenant um, right now. So get RDS session host is the command to get any session hosts or, or any host pools. So the tenant name is TCIT WVD tenant zero. And we don't have a host pool. So I, I meant to show the uh, command RDS host pool. And then again, total cloud IT WVD dot tenant zero. And no results because uh, we do not have any host pools. So um, going back to the tutorial, very conveniently, our next step is to create a host pool in the Azure marketplace. <clears throat> so uh, the prerequisites is that we have a tenant in Azure Virtual Desktop, and we can confirm that we do, and that we have the PowerShell module. So we can sign into the Azure portal. Uh, with that, let's go to our Azure portal. We'll start here, and we will uh, go to the home page, which we already own, and create a resource. So create a resource, and it's going to have a search for Windows virtual desktop uh, provision a host pool. So at Microsoft's asking for us to provision a host pool and so we shall. We simply click create and from here it's pretty self-explanatory so I, I won't be following the tutorial but um, you'll be able to keep up with me just fine. So I do not currently have, oh I apologize. Uh, we need to, I got a little bit ahead of myself here. Uh, we need to go ahead and deploy a, uh, uh, we are going to deploy a Windows Virtual Desktop, uh, an Azure AD Domain Services instance so that our Windows Virtual Desktop has a, um, has an Active Directory that it can join itself to. So before I get too far ahead of myself, uh, we will go to home, create a new resource, and we will search for Azure, Active Directory uh, Domain Services. Okay, and on the marketplace, it shows us Azure AD Domain Services by Microsoft. We'll select this. I do not have a resource group, 
So uh, this is this tutorial is coming or this webinar is coming from the perspective that uh, you do not have any Azure resources at all. You don't have a presence in Azure and and but uh, with uh, everything happening in our world right now, uh, we would like to be able to quickly spin up um, a, a remote working environment for our users. Um, so we have Office 365 or Microsoft 365 and we're looking to you know, utilize it to um, set up a remote work scenario. So no resource groups at all in our tenant. So we'll go ahead and create a new one and we'll just simply name it Windows Virtual Desktop hyphen RG for resource group. Uh, the DNS domain name can be tcitlab.onmicrosoft.com. That's just fine. We can actually change the DNS domain name um, of our Active Directory. So what Azure AD Domain Services is, is Microsoft deploys two managed domain controllers in the cloud and, and replicates the contents of your Azure Active Directory onto these domain controllers. Um, for this demo, I'll leave it as is, but you can change this. Uh, and, and you will not uh, lose track of this. It does tell you on the, uh, the resource itself after it's created um, what the name of the, uh, of the Azure AD Domain Services is. So we'll actually create this in West US. Uh, of course, you uh, would deploy this in a location that is closest to you. So West US is ha happens to be closest to software media and total cloud IT. Um, and then the SKU is actually standard. A small company, we don't need quite uh, the SKUs. Uh, it is a, a, a bigger instance, uh, a bigger virtual machine instance, and the back end that runs um, when you select the higher SKUs. So you simply want the standard SKU and a user forest. We'll click networking. We don't quite have a virtual network yet. So um, instead of Microsoft's name, I'm going to actually name this WVD VNet because this is going to be used for our Windows Virtual Network. Um, if you already have an in existing VNet infrastructure, um, I recommend you just continue extending that out. Um, and, and personally, best practice for me is to, to put Azure AD Domain Services in its own VNet and do VNet peering um, for, for connecting to it from other uh, from other VNets that, that need access to a domain services. So this is a very quick crash course. We'll have a, a more in-depth video on um, Azure AD domain services on our YouTube channel, um, but for now we'll just skim through this real quick. Uh, the defaults are just fine, so we'll go ahead and accept. Uh, rather, I will modify as well the name of the subnet. So we'll name this v, uh, WVD subnet instead of ADDS subnet. Okay, just keeps things consistent. We'll click next. We'll make sure that we are a member of the administrators for Azure AD Domain Services because if we are not, we will not be able to um, authenticate against the domain and that will not enable us to create our, our resources that we need. So we'll go ahead and select Fantastic, and uh, I'm the only person that currently needs to. If we need to, we can import or remove members or download members as a CSV um, if our tenant is great enough that we need to to do so. But um, for most businesses that are small enough, just use the add members to, to add and remove uh, administrators as necessary. So having added ourselves as uh, administrators, we'll actually click on the Create Azure AD Domain Services blade up top. Uh, follow the um, the breadcrumb um, back to this pane, and the notifications you can select uh, which administrative notifications, uh, which administrator groups in your organization receives notifications about Azure AD Domain Services Health. Synchronization will just synchronize all um, Azure AD users and groups right now into the managed domain. Um, however, if you are large enough, you may want to select scoped uh, and and select Azure AD groups that you want synchronized into Azure AD domain services. Um, once you select all or scoped, you cannot reconfigure this. You must delete the entire Azure AD domain services um, resource and redeploy it. So for now, we'll just leave it at all. Um, review and create. It's going to validate. And while we're waiting for it to validate, I'll point out here that uh, 
in deploying this service, we do consent that Azure AD can store uh, credential hashes for NTLM and Kerberos. So we'll create, we'll hit OK, and this is going to take some time. Um, so uh, we'll take a small break and uh, we'll come right back once this has deployed. All right. With the magic of editing, our uh, Azure AD domain services subscription or resource rather um, has now been fully deployed and running. It takes anywhere from half an hour to two hours, depending on Azure's load, um, to deploy Azure AD domain services. One of the first things we want to make sure we do is that we update the DNS servers uh, settings for the virtual network so that instead of using Azure's built in um, DNS, uh, we'll go ahead and set the two IP addresses of the managed domain controllers, uh, in this case 10.0.0.4 and 10.0.0.5, as the DNS servers for the VNet. So we'll go ahead and hit configure here. And you can see Microsoft does it for us. We will go to the subscription resource groups and our WVD resource group. And we can see in the VNet, looking under DNS servers, that we are using custom DNS servers. So that's working fantastic. Now this next step is going to be uh, resetting the password for this uh, global administrator account. Um, when we deploy Azure AD domain services, um, in order for password synchronization between the domain services and the Azure ID to, to take effect, we do need to reset our password um, uh, for all cloud only accounts. If you're doing um, an Azure AD synchronized or Azure AD connected uh, ad, uh, domain, Active Directory domain, uh, you do not need to go through the process of resetting a user's password, um, but you do need to uh, make sure that password hash synchronization is enabled in your Azure AD Connect configuration. So that said, we'll view my account um, for this tenant so that we can reset the password. So um, change the password. I will um, grab the old password one moment. Okay, and I've got that password here, and we'll go ahead and generate a new password. So bear with me for just a moment. I've got that copied. Paste that here. I'm going to make sure as well, off screen, I update this password in my password manager and save. Fantastic, and we'll just say Edge does not need to remember the password for us. So uh, having reset our password, um, we will give it roughly a couple minutes to synchronize our password, which, which uh, gives us plenty of time um, to go ahead and start looking at deploying the, uh, the, uh, the session host pool. Um, so looking back at the tutorial, and go ahead and bring that browser back on the screen. Um, uh, where we had left off uh, prior was um, the step three of the tutorial, uh, creating a host pool using the Azure Marketplace. So with that, uh, we are here in Microsoft Azure. When we click create a resource, um, oh, actually, because we reset our password, uh, we're going to have a session reset here real quick. Um, so just to expedite that, let's sign out and sign back in. Um, and once we sign back in, we'll continue uh, the process of deploying the host pool. Um, and so with that uh, message coming up, that does uh, tell me that we are in a state where the password should be synchronized. So we're good to move to step three. So um, grab my password that I just reset, sign in, and sure, we'll stay signed in. I'm on a separate profile just for the lab here in, in Edge. And then um, in order to, uh, we only have one subscription and one resource group, so I'll just use create a resource directly from here. Um, okay, and so to reiterate, we are on uh, step three of the tutorial for Windows Virtual Desktop, and that is to create a host pool using the Azure Marketplace. Um, oops. So one of the steps that we need to take is to go to the homepage in Azure, uh, click create a resource and then search for Windows Virtual Desktop. 
Searching for Windows Desktop, uh, Virtual Desktop will give us the option of uh, provisioning a host pool. So we'll click that. Click Create here. And then we'll select our resource group, uh, Windows Virtual Desktop hyphen resource group or hyphen RG. Um, and uh, as I mentioned briefly earlier, uh, you would create this host pool in the location, in the geographic location um, that is closest to your end users who will be accessing the resource. So here we'll use West US and the host pool name will be TCIT for Total Cloud IT, uh, Windows Virtual Desktop, WED uh, host pool, HP. Um, so desktop type here, uh, this is an important choice. Pooled means that um, users will log into the same Windows uh, Virtual Desktop um, instance until it is either uh, loaded up all the way or uh, based on the the, uh, the load balancing pattern that we're selecting. There's, there's breadth mode, um, which uh, allows all VMs to be provisioned uh, all users to log in across multiple VMs and, and be balanced out across a set of running VMs, or there's depth mode, which is all the VMs are turned off um, until a VM is filled up and to, uh, according to around 80% capacity or, uh, or, or whatever capacity um, the VM ideally should handle for a certain set of working users. And then it spins up another VM, adds people into those until that's up to capacity, turns up another VM. Um, so depth mode is very uh, cost conscientious um, versus uh, breadth mode being very uh, user experience and, and user um, log on speed ex uh, experience. So uh, with personal, the desktop type, uh, you generate a VM per user that is going to be accessing Windows Virtual Desktop. For example, if you're deploying the solution for 10 users, you're going to have 10 VMs. They're going to be sized modestly for those 10 users. Um, but uh, so for, for that kind of workload where you want people to be isolated from each other, um, you're going to be selecting personal. So we'll select pooled. Um, and uh, this default desktop users is uh, when you create a host pool, it by default generates a, an application group of desktop type instead of application. Uh, Windows Virtual Desktop is capable of hosting remote apps, um, very much like uh, RDS um, does, or it can re host uh, remote desktops. Um, and a, a host pool can only be either remote desktop or remote app. So um, for this, we'll, we'll do default desktop users. That's going to be myself. A TCIT lab on Microsoft.com. And then the service metadata location you can choose. Um, uh, here, my locale is within the United States, um, but you can choose where the service metadata is stored. For example, if I were to store, uh, deploy this within Germany, I could <coughs> say if it's a sovereign or if it's Germany public. So we'll go ahead and just leave it at United States. Um, on the next pane, we'll be configuring the actual instance of a virtual machine that will be um, utilized for this host pool. Um, we're going to create an availability availability set um, so that uh, we can do the load balancing and, and so that uh, VMs that uh, turn off can can spin up other VMs as well. So uh, we'll say light duty, and let's just say for most companies, maybe it's a team of 25 users, and you can see that. Uh, Azure's um, backend has been predetermined by Microsoft that, hey, if you're going to be using light, um, we're probably going to need two of these. If we're, we've got 25 power users, we'll, we'll do an N by N, um, which is, uh, it, it's going to be a, a breathing set um, that scales up and down with the amount of users that are, that are logging on and that are demanding resources at a time. Um, but for this instance, we'll use light or medium. Um, medium, uh, you can see, doesn't change the count of VMs or this the size of the VM excuse me um, heavy we'll, we'll see that VM count double um, but we'll leave it at medium here so uh, and then you can set a virtual machine prefix you do not have to add the trailing hyphen and number uh, Microsoft adds uh, the trailing uh, hyphen for you so we'll do um, TCIT hyphen uh, WVD hyphen uh, SH for session host and then we'll leave it there and uh, you can see here, Microsoft does the hyphen number for you. So uh, next we'll visit virtual machine settings. So here's where you can bring your own image 
if you got an image uh, uploaded to Azure Images, uh, uh, that is an option. You can specify the image in the image resource group. Um, or if you've got a, a virtual hard drive that you've uploaded into Azure Blob Storage, uh, that's already that's your golden image. Um, you've already done all the work to it, set up the 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 applications, the the policies, the security settings, the hardening of the OS. You can upload it to Azure and, and use it from here. For this instance, we'll use the gallery. Um, uh, primarily because we want to take advantage of the Windows 10 Enterprise multi-session, um, which is exclusive to Azure Windows Virtual Desktop. And this is true Windows 10 multi-session. Um, you can have multiple users logged in at the same time remotely. It does not need to be a full Windows Server 2016 server uh, 2016 data center. Um, the benefit of this is that using Microsoft 365 Business, uh, or now Business Premium and above licensing, entitles you to the Windows 10 Enterprise multi-session um, without having to purchase additional user cows or SA. Um, if you were to deploy this as a Windows 20, uh, Server 2016 data center and you did not have SA um, benefits or you do not have server cows, you will need to purchase those to be able to take advantage of Windows Virtual Desktop. Um, but if you've got Win Microsoft 365 for your organization or at least for the users who are using Windows Virtual Desktop, you are set and good to go. Uh, the disk type will be premium SSD because this will be a live. Uh, this is intended to be a live production workload with multiple users on multiple VMs, so we utilize uh, the premium SSDs. So the AD join uh, v, uh, UPN. This is going to be the same as my um, Azure AD UPN because we've extended our Azure AD with domain services. So we'll go ahead and uh, type in my uh, UPN here, John.no at tcit or tcitlab.onmicrosoft.com. And my admin password, I will quickly copy that once again from my password manager. Fantastic. Uh, you can, do have the option if you've got a, a pre-built domain or if you're, you're bringing your own domain into Azure, you can specify a specific OU um, or, or a specific domain in your forest or a specific OU uh, to to join those computer objects into. So the virtual network, we're going to select the WVD VNet. Uh, you are required to uh, select a VNet and subnet that has a custom uh, domain uh, a custom do domain name um, servers registered. So WVD VNet is the one that we've deployed Azure AD domain services into, so it does. We'll go ahead and click next. And uh, the default tenant group is correct um, because we did not create a new tenant group. The tenant name that we set is, um, as we see here earlier, is the TCIT WVD tenant zero. So oh, thank you, but no thank you, Edge. Uh, that's our tenant name. And we're not going to be authenticating with UPN. That is an option. Um, but the UPN, uh, if you're going to use UPN, that user must not have multi-factor enabled either through um, the uh, Office 365 um, multi-factor or through Microsoft 365 or Azure AD premium um, conditional access policies. So if you do not have MFA enabled for your administrator accounts, which I do not recommend, um, you can use UPN or the service principle we had set up. Um, we're going to revisit at this point in time to be able to utilize it. So here we see the application ID. We'll copy that into application ID. And the password is the uh, service principal creds we set up uh, earlier. Copy those. And it doesn't need twice, so we'll paste that twice. And then the Azure AD tenant ID. We'll grab that from our notepad. This is our Azure AD tenant ID. We'll copy and paste. All green across the board. Let's go ahead and review. Azure is going to run its validation against our parameters that we've set for the deployment. So it will just take a moment. Okay, fantastic. Okay, so a quick recap. We're deploying this into our, our normal standard subscription that is just the Pago subscription. Um, it's a, a The resource group is Windows Virtual Desktop Resource Group. It's going to be deployed to West US. Our host pool uh, name is going to be Total Cloud IT or TCIT hyphen WVD hyphen host pool, uh, Windows Virtual Desktop Host Pool. Uh, we're deploying a pool desktop type 
and I'm the default desktop users, and our metadata is being stored in the US. Uh, we are creating an availability set, 25 total users, usage profile is medium, and so our uh, VM size is DS, uh, D4S V3, uh, and then we're going to prefix our VMs with uh, Total Cloud IT WVD SH for session host. We're going to use an image from the gallery, uh, and that image being the Windows 10 Enterprise multi-session uh, with Office 365. And uh, the rest of this is just the domain join, um, which virtual network we're joining it to, and uh, and the service principle we're using to um, to create this host pool into that session host or into the Windows uh, virtual desktop tenant. So we will go ahead and click create, and this will take some time. So I will see you after deployment concludes. Uh, sometime later, and our WVD uh, host pool has finished uh, provisioning, and we can see here that uh, the host pool deployed an availability set. It created, uh, it used the link template to create the uh, de and the virtual machines, um, TCTIVT. Uh, WVD SH1 and SH0, and you can see here that it ran some DSC extensions to join it to the domain. Um, uh, to, in order to connect to uh, Windows Virtual Desktop, um, there are multiple clients that we can choose from. Uh, opening our tutorial again, jumping down to the how to section, uh, we can see here that we have multiple methods to connect to Windows Virtual Desktop. Uh, resources. Uh, we have the Windows Desktop Client, which is an installed client. Um, Android or Mac OS. Uh, Mac OS also has an installed client. Android and iOS also have um, applications or, 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 or mobile apps uh, that can connect uh, to the resource. So on your iPad or, or on your um, Android tablet, you can connect to um, your WED resources, as well as on your phones, although the resolution may be a little bit unusable at, at, at those screen sizes. Um, but the option we'll choose today is the uh, web client. Uh, and consider that all of these clients and, and scenarios do not require the installation uh, of a VPN solution. Um, you are able to access your uh, Windows Remote Desktop or Windows Virtual Desktop instances without having to set up and, and pay for an uh, additional VPN throughput uh, to the uh, to Azure Cloud or to your on-site, um, unless you are in the event where uh, you are doing uh, federated authentication towards your your local um, Active Directory. But again, that actually goes from the cloud to your uh, organization. So um, for for today, we'll connect with the web client, and in order to do so, uh, the URL is right here. We'll copy the link and go back to our demo tenant, paste the link. And here we can see our TCIT WVD tenant zero. Um, you're able to use spaces and et cetera in your tenant name so that uh, the user experience doesn't look so uh, so technical. Um, but here we've got our uh, TCTIT WVD and this should be HP. Um, I'm not quite sure what happened during the deployment here. Uh, but if we hover over it, we can see that the tooltip does indeed say that it is the, the host pool that we deployed. Uh, because this is a demo tenant, I can click on this. We can see that I can redirect my my clipboard, my printer, um, and then I can also not be asked again for those redirections. Uh, we'll hit allow. And because this is a demo tenant, I am not licensed uh, for, for Microsoft 365 on the demo. Um, and so it will not allow me to connect to the gateway. Because of that, I do have a uh, a environment that I set up the exact same way um, on software media uh, instead of the Total Cloud IT Lab. Um, and this is just a, a test WVD tenant that I created at some point. Um, and so we'll go ahead and click here, allow um, for the redirection. And now the user experience is that uh, WVD will uh, open up the remote port and uh, my password manager will say which uh, credential do you want to sign in with. Uh, my softwaremedia.com one is the account I use to set up the Azure AD domain services and, uh, and is the one that I assign to the default desktop host pool. So entering my credentials here, I can hit submit. And here I am signing in to Windows 10. 
Um, and then again, this is the uh, Windows 10 multi-user uh, session um, experience with uh, Office 365. So I can full screen and here I am working from a browser on Windows 10, uh, on Windows 10 using Windows Virtual Desktop, um, completely in the cloud, no extra infrastructure necessary, although we will be releasing videos um, later this month and, and as WVD developed on how to uh, utilize other methods of bringing your infrastructure into Azure um, to utilize with WVD. Um, so just to take a look around here, we are indeed um, able to use uh, Microsoft apps, um, for example, Outlook, Word, uh, we've got Edge and the Windows Store. We'll go ahead and click settings here. And we will look at the system and we'll look at about. So here we are looking at using Windows 10 Enterprise for virtual desktops version 1909 installed on 4-17-2020, um, which was the date that I built out this, uh, this WVD tenant here. Um, so we can unpin this uh, tab and it looks just like a Windows for remote desktop. Um, you do not have to provide your users with VPN. They don't need to go to connect to an arbitrary IP address if you're not using, uh, if you're not fronting it with DNS. I can sign in here and uh, start using it just as if I was uh, sitting at my office computer. Um, so Windows Virtual Desktop running in the cloud, uh, set up in just a, a few hours, a few short hours if you're deploying. Um, if you're deploying Azure AD domain services, but very quick, low effort, uh, you can get it set up today, uh, get up and going without having to to spend any capital on server, uh, network, et cetera, uh, licensing, et cetera. So thank you so much for your time. And uh, we hope you really enjoy using this new feature and, and help it helps you uh, get your workforce mobilized to, to work from home safely and effectively during this trying time for all of us. So thank you so much for your time and uh, enjoy utilizing Windows Virtual Desktop going forward.